Hi there, Coach Sage Candy of SageRunning.com here with another training talk. Today we're going to talk about the taper phase or tapering before a uh, half marathon, marathon, ultra marathon. I've done other tapering, taper running talks before that I'll link to in the description below as well as at the end of this channel. You can subscribe, check out the playlist for more info on that. But it is a little bit tried and true, at least our tried and true program. In the last two weeks or the last 14 days before your big key race, we call this the taper phase. And of course it does depend on the bulk of training, hard training that you've done before that and, and your goals for a race. But generally if you see our sagerunning.com training plans, uh, you could see some similarities as well as in my own personal marathon tapering plans. And this is applicable to half marathons, marathons, ultra marathons. Like I said before, shorter distance races, 5K, 10K, even uh, shorter races, mile, 1500 on the track. Tapering is a little bit different and there is some individual component to it as well, but this is our tried and true program for the longer distance races. So the first thing to understand about tapering is that there's a cutback, a reduction in volume or your weekly mileage. And there's also a reduction in the really hard, gut busting intense workouts that you do. If you've been doing super hard, long runs, long track sessions, intervals, even hard, long tempo runs or lactate threshold repeats, in the taper phase, the last two weeks, you're not gonna get any huge gains from, from doing these super hard workouts. If anything, it's a risk for overtraining because you could do a really brutal session of, of kilometer repeats or mile repeats or something, and you could leave your race out there, so to speak. And if you're less than 10 days out, you're not getting any benefits really from VO2 max. And so you wouldn't wanna do a high volume, high intensity workout. That being said, you still need to be training at a certain level with relative intensity. So the volume gets cut back, the mileage gets cut back, but the speed work still needs to be there, especially if you've been doing a lot of speed work, more as maintenance. You're trying to at least maintain your fitness, keep the, the fast twitch muscle fibers activated, get the, the body still used to doing intervals or tempo runs slightly faster than goal race pace, especially goal marathon pace, then maybe doing a up tempo run or something slightly slower than goal marathon race pace as well as workouts right around race pace, but they're relatively short. They're not the hardest workouts of your cycle. You've already done those three weeks out, four weeks out, and even looking back, if you rest up really conservatively, sometimes in the last two weeks, you could still have residual fatigue from really hard workouts or races that you did three or four work three or four weeks ago, so you have to be careful of that. All right, so at the end of this video, I'll show you my actual training schedule leading into the Boston Marathon here. A real life example of my last two weeks in the taper phase for this 12 week, 14 week or so training cycle. And it does depend, the mileage cutback is relative to your maximum weekly mileage, your average weekly mileage for the last couple months. And we'll, you'll see with me, I didn't add up the last week, but it's gonna be over 100K, over 65 miles in the last seven days. Heading into Boston, that's even with the day off. But that's still over 40% cutback from my peak weekly mileage of 120 miles per week or 194 kilometers per week. So that's kind of the cutback you'll see. And it does depend on experience a little bit. One final note, if I cut back too much, I will actually lose fitness. If I just stopped doing hard workouts and I just ran lower mileage and easy pace mileage, my fitness would actually drop over time. I'm My body is so used to running over 100 miles a week, 160K per week that I actually need to be careful with what I eat even on a whole foods plant-based diet. I need to be careful what I eat because I'll actually start gaining weight. So the other thing of tapering and, and doing still some intensity is because you're cutting back the volume and the mileage, you still need to rev the system and rev the metabolism in a certain way so that you're not uh, gaining too much weight because you you do have to cut back your calorie consumption then as well It's all relative to to your body's homeostasis or your body's balance and uh, You do want to you know carbo load a little maybe leading into the race But if you're eating a high carbohydrate in, in general, you should have plenty of glycogen stores But let's take a look at this diagram I made kind of showing the idea of the whole taper phase in the context of your training program. So you get an idea of what we call super compensation or getting a boost in fitness from the actual taper and ideally peaking in running peak fitness for your goal race. Let's take a look at it. All right, so this is kind of a rough hand-drawn diagram of what I made. And here we see on the x-axis uh, time increasing six weeks, eight weeks, that's not to scale but time going this way, and then relative fitness level going up as well as training stress, which training stress, we're talking about mileage, increasing mileage or volume, but also increasing big intense workouts, hard workouts. 
So as we start off in training, we're increasing our mileage, our training stress, maybe starting to add in some workouts. We get an increase in fitness. We get an increase in fitness. And this happens in the first couple months here. Then we start hitting some really hard workouts. We start doing some our highest mileage, all sorts of hard stuff along here. And we actually get a reduction in fitness because we're starting to get tired. We're starting to get tired from the training. So our fitness actually drops. And if we race in the middle of our hard training here, we might actually not have a good performance because we're running on tired legs. We're hitting peak mileage, we're doing hard workouts, we're totally sapped from the training. So what we need to do at that point is we need to rest. We need to take an easy week or we need to go full on into our taper phase. And again, this depends on timing, but this is just a, a, a little uh, illustration of this, what we call super compensation. And this may happen several times, but when we ultimately get into the taper phase after hard training block, we get this drop in fitness from residual fatigue. Maybe we're five weeks out, four weeks out. So then the last two weeks we taper. We taper because we want to be fresh for our peak goal race, race day, Boston Marathon for me. So those are the last two weeks heading into race day. When we start resting in the taper phase, we're cutting back our mileage. We're not doing super hard workouts anymore we get what we call super compensation. That's the goal. Super compensation, which bumps our fitness level up to a new peak, right? We, we were at this hard training phase, we have moved on in time, and this peak, this gain in fitness, this super compensation comes with rest. It comes with rest and reduction. It's kind of the whole idea of taper phase, but also recovery weeks mid-training cycle. People have maybe three weeks hard and then they have an easy week to adapt to the training and then you're at a new level of fitness and hopefully you're hitting that peak on an important race day and that's the whole idea hitting that highest level of fitness when it counts the most for race day. And that's kind of super compensation in a nutshell microcosm of training or micro cycle of training I should say. Alright so here was the original training plan. We see uh, the last two weeks here taper phase uh, Right here, so this is what we've been doing this week. Uh, and the mileage is tapered, so this is miles per week I had. I was hitting those 120 miles per week at the Shamrock Run in Portland. That was three weeks ago, and then I hit another 120 mile week, uh, 194 kilometers per week. And then this week I just finished up at 88, so down to 141, 142 kilometers per week only. So you got the taper in volume, and then these workouts are spread out more. I had a uh, a long run, my last long run, two weeks out from the race. Boston's a little unique because it's a Monday race. So Monday's the, the first day of the week on this calendar grid calendar. Uh, it's unique though, most times you have a race on a Saturday or Sunday, but Boston Marathon Monday. So we're counting back from that uh, week out. I do my long run, well I'll call it a medium long run, 14 miles. So it's just barely over a half marathon, um, 20 three kilometers, about 24 kilometers, and that'll just be super lax and chill, and then easy all week. But that's working backwards from the race, so mileage, I haven't even decided what it'll be. Could probably add it up, but I'm doing single digit days, not running twice a day anymore. But then last week, in this last two week taper phase, first workout I did earlier in the week was a, a light fart lick. I call it light fart lick. It was only 10K worth of work. I did average 525 per mile pace. It was about a, this is a sub 34 minute 10k out at the Boulder Res doing two minute surges, uh, close, a little faster than marathon pace with a one minute float recovery. So that's a steady recovery. It's about 630 mile pace recovery on the one minute float and then surging at around five flat mile pace or 307 per kilometer pace on the faster surges. Two easy days after that, two shorter easy days I should say. Yesterday's workout was my up-tempo run. I don't do very many of these because they're uh, slower than marathon pace for me, especially at altitude here in Boulder. But I did average 520 per mile pace. I think that's around 320 per kilometer pace. So a little slower than marathon goal pace, but again, trying to just feel nice and smooth at altitude. Only six miles worth of work on that. Nothing too strenuous, just a, a real medium workout to keep the metabolism revved up and easy today. And then just the last taper quality workout is actually just a speed session of, uh, you see differences in our, our sagerunning.com training plans with this taper phase. A lot of times we'll have athletes run a 5K or three miles straight up around marathon pace as their last workout before the big day. But in this case, I'm gonna break it down with two miles at faster than marathon pace and then one mile easy and then a one mile blast 
definitely sub five minute mile pace or sub 307 per kilometer pace for that last mile but it's a uh, just three miles or 5k worth of work really short and then three easy days before the actual race and actually have a day totally off usually when i travel i fly two days before a race i i wish won't even run that morning uh, i gotta catch an early morning plane flight just totally take the days off just a light shakeout jog four miles five miles 6k 7k before the day before the race uh, i don't even do any strides but just a real sh light shakeout keep the legs loosened up from the travel but it's just a real easy taper week there and actually we could add up the mileage here 14 uh, 24, mm, 34. It's still going to probably be about a 60, 65 mile week. Depends how far I run on these early days. I just have easy there. But that's kind of the, the last two week kind of taper phase. And uh, yeah. So thanks so much for watching this video. Again, really thank you for all the comments and haiku poems on the 100 subscriber video count. We'll be announcing the winner soon. Be sure to vote for those comment poems on that 100K subscriber video. Can't thank you enough for all your support, especially the Patreon supporters. Really generous with your support and positive feedback. I just wanna keep this channel going. Uh, it's always great to hear from you guys. So be sure to check out all the haikus. There's, there's so many great poems. I've been reading them and just uh, really blown away with the, the support and the creativity and your energy and enthusiasm. And I hope your running's going well. Be sure to check out the playlist and those other taper videos if you want. We sell training plans at sagerunning.com. Subscribe on here if you haven't already. Check me out on uh, Facebook. I have a Facebook athlete page as well as Instagram and Twitter, at Sage Thanks so much, guys. Hope your running's going well. And stay tuned for more Sage Running videos.